What's like, what's going on over here, man? Terrible. I was supposed to vlog from last session with Ali and Haven, but we ended up spending way too much time talking about our life situations and like just catching up. It's been a while since we've been in the studio. But today we're going back into the studio. We're going to finish the, I don't know, the chorus for the track. We did the verse last time and it ended up fire, man. And uh, yeah, gonna record the chorus from uh, this session and about to vlog some uh, way more from this session. I'm also gonna give you a couple of tips and tricks on how to have the microphone set up when you got a when you got a singer in the studio. So yeah, hang tight. <laughs> So this is your third session of the day? Yeah. Twi the second one? Second one, third song, Sunday. Fun Who did day. you write for earlier? Uh, Secret. No! Yes. It's not allowed, guys. That's what we call a tease. <laughs> I told you, bring a small cup you to the machine, one? man. Really, you see this one? You think this is big? Look at this one. Look at this guy. How do you think this is gonna work? I got my techniques, man. They're like invited in, they're like. Oh shit, no me there. Oh shit. It works. Okay. Okay. It can be. You fucking nailed it, man! We nailed it! I've been working too hard, man. <laughs> I've been working too, way too hard. Oh my hair. We're shooting stars, we're looking for guns, we're looking for stars, we're looking for, looking for, looking for like shooting stars, we're looking for Mars, looking for, looking for a total eclipse. <laughs> it's a total eclipse. <laughs> nice, man. Whoa. Oh, yeah, 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 What's yeah. going on? You know, you're a pro when you bring your bottle and a tube to the studio, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's the purpose of this whole thing? Um, it's great for your vocal cords to warm them up. Yeah. Because it gives resistance, so it's also like hot water in there. So it's like um, steam, steam. What do you call it? Steam. So you get steam to your yeah. cords. And so then, it softens up the cords and. Yeah. So then, let, let's say I'm gonna sing something really light, and if I sing it through the tube with the resistance, when I don't do it without it, it's a lot easier and it's a lot cleaner. Cool. Yeah. So that's how you warm up before you sing. Do you do some other types of exercises? Yeah, normally if I haven't sang the whole day, I'll do scales. Yeah. And then warm up like and lots of stuff. Good to know. Looking after the voice, you know? Yeah, it's your instrument, so you gotta take care of it. Let's get Anna just nailed some insane harmonies. And it goes like this. All my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so my battery ran out last time we were in the studio, but I'm gonna finish this up right here and right now. So I know that a lot of you young producers don't even have a setup at home and you might get a setup like with a microphone or a pop filter and one of these. And I'm gonna try to explain to you how to get the most out of all of these three things, get the most out of your recording and help you a little bit along the way instead of you going through the whole four weeks of wasting all of the audio from the artist that's singing when you're recording. Cool? Pay attention. The distance between the singer and the pop filter should be somewhere around five to 10 centimeters. And the distance between the pop filter and the microphone should be 10 centimeters. It all depends on how energetic the singer, rapper is, but it's mainly because you want to stop those B's and P's. Those bounce and pops that ruin your recording. Because if you don't have the pop filter, all of the B's and P's will go directly into the microphone. And when you see the audio, it will peak. It's extremely important to remember all these things and, and, and try them out and find the way that works for your artist when you're recording. They make a huge difference in 
the way you're gonna process the audio afterwards. Because if it has all these B's and P's, you can always try to work around it and make it sound somewhat okay. But if you, if you make sure of all of these things, you get a better recording. What's also recommended that you have in your studio is a preamp and a compressor. And uh, I'm not gonna bother you with what that means because I'm gonna have my man Thomas, who is my studio buddy and professional mixer, to explain to you why you should have a preamp and why you should have a compressor from when the signal goes from the mic into the preamp and then also into the compressor before it hits your sound card. So yeah, Thomas, take it away. All right, so why do we need a preamp? Microphone spits out a really quiet signal. So what the preamp does is that it brings a mic level signal up to a line level signal. Most audio interfaces these days will have um, a couple of microphone inputs with a preamp built in. For example, I got this guy, this really simple Steinberg um, interface. And you can see these two inputs right here. Um, they do have a, a um, preamp built in. So why would you consider buying an external one? And the reason for this is that it allows for more control and it will give you some tone and some color that you otherwise wouldn't get from just plugging your microphone into, let's say, like an audio interface like this. Moving on to compressors. Compressors are really awesome because they act like an automated gain knob. So you will have parts of the song where a vocalist will sing really loud or really quiet and the compressor just sort of evens out the difference. So you will have a more consistent signal going into the interface and into your DOW. It can also again give you some tone and some color. Um, and it can give some, it can give the, the vocal some attitude that, um, that is really cool for, for like, let's say rap vocals or if you're doing a pop tune, uh, then having some attitude in the signal can be really cool and a compressor is a great tool to achieve that. Together with a really good preamp, that's a bomb combo. So um, that is really beneficial gear to have, but it's not necessary. So focus on the basics first, get them down, then look into external gear, okay? Have a good one. So I believe that we have two types of sessions. We have those sessions where you go in with the producer and a songwriter and just bang out a track in two hours and everything is like all good. And the product is almost 100% done. And then you have those sessions where it takes a lot of time, you know? I started this project last year with my man Coney producing the track. And we didn't have any vocalists. We only, we produced something that we knew that was sounding pretty cool. And then I put it down for a minute. And then in February, I picked it up with my man Ali. Uh, and we wrote his verse. And uh, that's his second verse on the track. Uh, and then there's a lot of stuff that comes in the way. Life comes in the way, summer vacation comes in the way, and in August, me and Haywin got together and we we did something, we made something for a verse, but we never got, we never felt it 100%, but then I got Ali and Haywin in the studio together, and then everything worked out. Just because it takes a lot of time to finish up the song doesn't make it a bad song. You gotta believe in it, and, I, and if you believe in the song, it would turn out good. But yeah, we had a great session today. I hope you liked the vlog. And man, thanks for following me and thanks for checking out my new songs. Next time I'll be posting a video, we're gonna talk about mixing. So this, the next video might be a little bit geeky, but I believe that many of you bedroom producers and even like high tech professionals will, uh, will learn something from it. So yeah, take care. I'll see you in the next one.